morning everyone welcome back to my channel it's Jeannie with paper pixie ink and today we are continuing with the tutorials for the hello pink autumn not so mini um, mini album so today we're gonna start on the front of the first page I'm not sure how far we will get uh, I don't want to make these videos too long, so let's dive in. We're going to start by creating a pocket and a flap and then a kind of secondary flap. So let's start with the pocket. To create our pocket, we're going to need a piece of black cardstock and we are going to cut that to four and a half by nine inches. And then we're going to score on the short sides at a half an inch and then on one side along the long edge we're going to score at a half an inch as well and then i'm going to grab a punch an edge punch from we are memory keepers uh, it's called scallop arches i think and i am going to punch along the long edge that i did not score and then i am going to trim off the kind of edges of the where I punched um, so that they don't interfere with when we're scoring and laying down our pocket and then we'll go ahead and trim off the two corners where our score lines meet and we will fold along our score lines and burnish everything down so we get a nice flat pocket. All right, so let's go ahead and make our large flap. To do this, we're gonna take a large piece of black cardstock and we are going to cut that to eight inches by 10 inches. So eight inches wide, 10 inches tall, and we're gonna score at the half inch mark along the short edge so that when you fold that scored piece over, you end up with a flap that is eight inches by nine and a half inches and then we're going to go ahead and cut two more pieces of black cardstock for our little photo mat flap that is at the top we're going to cut the first one to five inches by six and a half inches and we're going to score at the half inch mark on the long edge so that you end up with a photo mat size of four and a half by six and a half and then we're going to cut the second one to seven inches by four and a half inches and we're going to score at the half inch mark along the short edge so that again you end up with a photo mat flap that is four and a half by six and a half. All right, so in order to hold our large flap down, I am going to use a couple of the tags from the Bigs Die, the Tim Holt tags one. I can't remember the exact name of it, but I just cut two of them out using black chipboard, just some scraps that I had lying around, and then I cut two pieces um, of the pattern paper to match. Uh, I'm just going to glue them on top and use a couple of small, smaller black brads to attach them to the paper that will be on my pocket on the inside because the large flap obviously isn't the whole page. So now that I have those ready, it's time to pick out some papers. So I'm going to go ahead and choose some of my pattern papers that will go on my flaps and on the inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut my piece of pattern paper that's going to go on the front of my pocket. 
and I am going to cut that to seven and three quarters by three and a quarter. And then the piece that's left, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that to, I'm gonna leave the, the long edge the same, I guess. Um, and I'm gonna trim it so that it is seven and three quarters as well. So I'm just gonna use the same paper for both. I have a little bit of overlap um, in the kind of inside my pocket, um, but that is how I like it anyway. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pattern paper that's gonna go on the front of my large flap. And I'm gonna trim that to seven and three quarters by nine and one quarter. And then let's also go ahead and make a selection for the front of our little photo mat flap that we're gonna create. Um, in the end, I decided to use a four by six journaling card, just one of the plain um, checker ones, buffalo check, is that buffalo check? Anyway, um, I decided to use one of those instead of pattern paper, but you could just cut a piece of your pattern paper as well to use instead. So we'll also need the photo mats for our little kind of photo mat flap. <laughs> um, we're going to need four of those. Three will be photo mats for the inside and back. And the fourth one will be to back the four by six journaling card that we are using. If you decided to cut a piece of pattern paper then you might not need this. I'm also gonna go ahead and round all of the corners on my photo mat, the black cardstock for my photo mat flip part, my the two bottom corners of my large flap, and the coordinating pink photo mats as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach my two black pieces of cardstock together using the short flap that will go on the left. And then I'm gonna put a set of magnets in between them so that I can keep this little photo mat flap um, closed unless people want to open it. And let's go ahead and add a magnet to the back of the photo mat flap, the one that will be up against the large flap. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue the photo mat flap to our large flap. And then we'll go ahead and apply a magnet as well to the large flap. And that will allow us to hold our photo mat flap down Now I'm gonna go ahead and glue my large flap down to my base page. I'm going to stamp my camera images on my pink colored photo mats. And then I'm gonna glue the top part of my photo mat down. So I'm gonna grab a pink piece and then my four by six journaling card. 
So now let's work on getting our base page finished. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down the piece of patterned cardstock, the large piece that's going to go on the main page or on the base page below the pocket. I'm going to glue that down first and then I'm going to glue my pocket onto like over top of that on the bottom. Alright, so before we can attach our pattern paper to our pocket, we need to attach our little tabs, our little flip tabs to it. So I'm just eyeballing and marking the spot that I need to punch my hole to attach the brads to. So once I do that, I'm going to use my crocodile um, 1 8 in inch punch part <laughs> um, to punch the holes and then I'm going to attach my tabs with my black brads and then on the back side where you have like opened the brads I'm going to put a piece of double-sided adhesive over those just to help hold them in place a little bit better. Alright, so to finish off the page, we are going to go ahead and glue down our photo mats inside our photo mat flap. We'll glue down our page, our pattern paper for the front of our large flap. We'll go ahead and add that double sided adhesive over our brads and then we will attach that. And then we are going to cut a piece of pattern paper for the back side of our large flap and again we cut that to seven and three quarters by nine and a quarter we probably should have done this earlier but I missed it when I was cutting everything else Alright, so moving on to the back of the first page. This page is somewhat simplistic in that we just have a kind of base pattern paper and then we have two kind of little flip elements that are photo mats. And to make these, we are going to need one of the 4x6 journaling cards, the portrait style, not landscape. And then one of the cut apart elements from the A4 paper pads. I chose the one with the fall leaves and it just says fall on it. So let's go ahead and pick those out. So let's go ahead and cut our pattern paper for our base page to seven and three quarters by ten and a half. And then we're going to cut a piece of black cardstock to eight and a half by four and three quarters. And then we're going to score at the halfway mark along the short edge at four and a quarter so that when you fold it over, you end up, it's almost a square that will be four and a quarter by four and three quarters and that will be for the fall mat. Mm -hmm. 
let's also go ahead and cut a pink cardstock mat for backing that little fall cut apart and we're going to cut that to four inches by four and a half inches and then let's round the corners for the black cardstock the pink cardstock and our little fall cut apart So let's go ahead and finish this component off. We're going to cut two more pieces of the pink cardstock to four by four and a half inches. We're going to round the corners and we're going to stamp them with the little camera stamp. And then we are going to add a magnet to the inside of the black cardstock. We're going to attach our two pieces of pink cardstock, our photo mats on the inside, and then we'll move on. So moving on to our longer photo mat component, we're going to cut a piece of black cardstock to nine inches by six and a half inches. And then we're going to score at four and a half inches on the short side so that when you fold it over, you end up with a rectangular piece that is six and a half by four and a half. And then we're going to go ahead and cut a piece of the pink cardstock to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Let's just go ahead and glue down our pattern paper to our base page. Let's finish off our 4x6 journaling card component. We're going to cut two more pieces of the pink cardstock to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. We're going to round the corners on everything to match the first component that we made as well as the journaling card which already has the rounded corners. We're going to add a magnet to the inside of this component on the black cardstock. We're going to go ahead and stamp the camera image on our two photo mats for the inside. This is optional again. We're going to go ahead and glue all of the mats down, so the two with the camera stamp on the inside and then the pink mat to back the journaling card on the front, and then we're going to go ahead and glue the journaling card on that as well. So I'm just going to lay these out so I can kind of see in my head how these are going to work. And then I'm going to glue down the kind of squarish one at the top first. And what I'm going to do, I didn't show this in the walkthrough, but what I'm going to do is I'm only going to glue three sides, the top and bottom and then the left. So that that spot to the right when, you know, it's facing forward, you can tuck like a little tag or a smaller journaling card or something like that in there if you want. And then for the four and a half by six and a half component, I'm going to only apply glue on for like the top 
on the right hand side so that I'm not gluing it over top of the mat for the square-ish one. And then I'm going to put it on the bottom and along the right side so that when you flip it over and glue it down, on the left side it is open underneath the component so again you have a little tuck space that you can tuck a tag or a journaling card or whatever it is that you desire. So moving on to the front of the second page, this one's pretty simple, but I really like how it turned out. I, this is kind of like a, a gate fold style, but it's very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out pattern paper that will go on the front of my like gate fold flaps. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces of black cardstock to four and a half by ten and three quarters and I'm going to score along the long edge on both of those at the half inch mark. Let's just go ahead and glue down our two flaps as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and cut our pattern paper for our front cover. We're going to cut a piece, well, two pieces, to three and three quarters by ten and a half. And then I'm going to take my little hook closure thing. <laughs> I'm sure they have a name, I have no idea what it is. And I'm going to lay out my pattern paper on top of my two gatefold flaps and then I'm gonna hold <laughs> I'm gonna hold them down my pattern paper down with some mint tape from scrapbook.com just so that they don't move while I'm trying to mark where I'm going to punch the holes in my pattern paper to attach my little hook closure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch my holes using my 1 8 inch punch on my crocodile, and I will attach each side of this little hook closure using some small brads that are in a matching color. Alright, so to glue these down, I'm going to go ahead and put some double sided adhesive on the back side over where the brads are. I'm going to just do that whole edge with double sided adhesive and then just for good measure, I'm going to put another row of it right below it just because these are really, really close to the edge of the pattern paper and I wanna make sure that this holds really, really well. So I'm gonna do that for both of them and then I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid adhesive to glue them down to the front flaps of the gatefold. So 
Moving on to the inside of our gatefold, we are going to choose two pieces of pattern paper, one for the base page and one that we will cut in half for the inside flaps of the gatefold. The pattern paper for our base page, we are going to cut that to seven and three quarters by ten and a half. And then the pattern paper for our flaps, we are going to cut two pieces to three and three quarters by ten and a half. All right, so I'm going to just grab some of my pre-cut and stamped photo mats that I had created before I started this process. And I'm just going to kind of figure out how I want to lay these out. So I'm going to take two of the two, there are three by four with the black mats on them and I'm going to use them in portrait style. I'm going to do two on the inside left flap and two on the inside right flap. And then I'm going to take two of the ones where the black mat is four inches by five and a half inches. And I'm going to lay one out so that it is portrait style in the top left corner, one that is landscape style in the bottom right corner. And then I'm also going to use one of my little journaling cards that I created where I have them available on my website if you want to download and print them yourself. And then I'm going to use one of the pieces of ephemera from the collection um, to just kind of mat in the middle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start gluing some of my photo mats down to the their black bases. I've also used my brother scan and cut machine to cut a black mat for backing my piece of ephemera that I'm going to use. And then I'm also going to cut a piece of black cardstock to back my little journaling card that I created. And that's going to be cut to two and three quarters by four inches. I'm going to go ahead and glue down my pattern paper on my inside flaps and my base page and then I'm going to start gluing down my black matted photo mats in the places that I chose. For my mats on my base page, I'm going to go ahead and glue down my two mats and my little journaling card. And then I am going to use that as a guide so that I can tell where I need to apply glue on my little piece of ephemera. What I probably should have done was just use some small strips of foam double-sided foam adhesive to pop my little ephemera element up a little bit in kind of like an upside down t-shape um, between my photo mats and my journaling card. I didn't really think of it until after the fact and it was a little too late but you can do that if you would like.
All right, so for the back of the second page, I just kind of did a bunch of side flaps in various sizes. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the black cardstock that I need for all of my flaps. The large flap needs a piece of black cardstock cut to eight by nine and a half, and then you're gonna score at the half inch mark along the long edge. And then the medium flap needs black cardstock cut to six and a half by eight inches. You're gonna score at the half inch mark on the long edge. And the small flap is cut to, a black piece of black cardstock is cut to five inches by six and a half inches. And again, you're gonna score at the half inch mark along the long edge. Let's go ahead and create a little flap to help hold these closed. I'm just gonna grab a piece of my scrap cardstock. I'm going to score at the half inch mark on the short edge for one side, and then I'll determine if I need to cut any extra off. So I would just eyeball it until you are happy with the placement of where that you know the end of that closure lands because we are going to magnetize that later uh, i just kind of aimed for the center and then we're going to go ahead and glue down all of our flaps so we're going to glue the large flap down first and then the medium on top of that and then the small on top of that So once I have my flaps glued down, I am going to take my little closure flap and I am going to find the center of the little closure piece and the center of my page on the right, just so that when I go to apply this, I can make sure that it's centered and not all wonky. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that little tab down. So at first I thought that I might use one of my chipboard pieces as the kind of like topper for my closure. In the end I ended up not using it, but I do attach it temporarily here just so I can get a feel for how it would work. But let's go ahead and add our magnet at least because we do want to make sure this is magnetized closed. And then to piggyback off of the closure magnet on the top of our small flap, we're going to just use that as the magnet closure for to hold that flap closed from the inside. And then we're going to apply magnets on between the back of the medium sized one and the large flap. And then again on the back of the large flap and the base page. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and round the corners of my flaps 
I didn't think of it before I glued them down. So to make it a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to use one of my other corner punches. This one is an EK success, I think it was. And I'm just gonna go ahead and round all the corners of my little flaps. And then when I'm done that, I'm going to choose some pattern paper for my base page, the top of my large flap, the top of my medium flap, and then for the top of my small flap, I'm actually going to use one of the portrait style four by six journaling cards. And I'm going to back that with some of that pink cardstock that I've been using for backing as well as photo mats. So that will be cut to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'll go ahead and cut a second one of those for the back side of it and just go ahead and make that a photo mat. So let's go ahead and glue our journaling card to our pink mat, and then we will glue that down to the front of our small flap, and then we'll glue our little photo mat to the back of that. We're going to cut the pattern paper for our medium and large flaps. So for the medium flap, we're going to need two pieces of pattern paper that are cut to five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And then for the large flap, we're going to need again two pieces of pattern cardstock or pattern paper to seven and a quarter by nine and a quarter. And then for our base page, we're gonna need a piece of pattern paper that is cut to 10 and a half by seven and three quarters. So since I decided not to use a piece of my chipboard on the edge of this closure, I'm going to go ahead and mark on the top and bottom and on the right side, I'm going to mark a half an inch in and then I'm going to just snip those corners off so that I can create a somewhat different look to this little closure flap without having anything that it, anything extra that is going to cover what my little four by six journaling card says the enjoy today give hugs give smiles and then when I'm done doing that I'm going to cut two pieces of black glitter cardstock just to go on the front and back of these and I'm gonna cut both of those to one and three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches. <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna just trim, I'm going to mark on the back of them using the already cut tab. I'm gonna mark on the back of my black glitter cardstock with my pencil so that I know where to cut the angled pieces off.
To finish off this page, we're going to trim all of the corners with our little corner rounder punch from EK Success, or if you were smart, unlike me, and punched them, punched your flaps prior to adhering them down, you can use your crocodile or your corner chomper or really whatever you want. You don't even have to do to round the corners if you if you don't want to. We're gonna do that for all of our pattern paper and we're gonna glue it all down. And here I'm just playing with some of my pre-cut photo mats to see how I may want to lay some of these out later. I'm not going to actually attach them yet because I'm not entirely sure what it is that I want to do. So I'm just going to lay them out and leave them for the time being. All right, so we have completed the inside front cover, the front and back of the first page, and the front and the back of the second page. This tutorial is already quite long, so we are going to stop here, and our tutorial number three will start on the front of the third page. So it looks like we may end up with four tutorials for this album instead of two or three but that's okay so thanks for watching everyone and as always if you're interested in seeing more don't forget to click on that subscribe button